Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, this episode is all about the DJI Mavic 3 Cine. And the DJI Mavic 3 Cine is supposed to be for professionals. At least that's what DJI says. So because of that, I'm gonna make this video for the professional audience. So if you are someone who has DJI drones, but all you do is film your dogs, cats, children, cityscapes, farmer's fields, and you don't make any money from it, this video is probably not for you, but you will find it darn interesting. Now, if you are a professional, like, I don't know, a wedding photographer, an events photographer, some sort of person taking quality images and then getting money in return for your work, then you will love this video and you should pay attention because I'm going to tell you a lot of stuff I did not realize when I bought this. Now, this is a $5,000 drone, which equates to over $6,000 Canadian. So yes, that's how much I paid for this. I didn't get it for free. I had to pay it with my own money. And if you are a professional, do not buy the base model or the fly more model because you will not get any of the features you need to use this as a professional. Now, for all you pros out there, let me tell you the good points about this drone. First off, it has a 46 minute flight time. Not really it's more like over 30 minutes i didn't get 46 minutes flight time with this thing it does have a very good penetration like range very far so if you're around buildings trees objects like that it's phenomenal it is the best of the best it uses like ocusync 3 plus the 5k video which you will need as professional because you're going to want to crop in later records to a maximum of 50 frames per second now i know most of you pros are going to record at 24 frames per second but having 50 frames per second means that you might be able to get a little bit smoother slow motion when you want to there is a micro four third sensor in the camera, which is good, but here is the bad. DJI makes the Mavic more like an entry level drone. So they use DJI fixed lenses like on your cell phone or action camera. They're very low quality. And I have to tell you from a professional, the lens on this one, it's good, but it's nothing to write home about because it's only a 2.8 f-stop on it. So it's not letting in a lot of light. It's not a fast lens. But with that said, with the lens being only an f2.8, you would think it would not be very good in low light. But check this out. This is me filming in front of my house at night and it's really good. I was impressed. It's actually sort of raining, snowing while I'm filming here and the lens is getting wet. But however, that lens is not showing the water droplets, even with the light on the ground reflecting off it. So there is some sort of noise reduction going on in this camera that I can't see. I can't control it myself because there's no options for it, but it's happening. When it films at night, it is adjusting its own noise reduction. Now, if you try to use manual settings, as most of us would when you're filming at night to get exactly what you want, you'll find it's very chaotic on the Mavic 3 Cine. It is not designed for a professional to sit there and adjust the settings on screen. The DJI Fly app is more like a beginner interface and it's made for people who know very little about cameras. So as a professional, you're gonna find yourself struggling and just giving up trying to set settings in manual format on this camera. And I do have to mention, I do love the landing assist light, which is there for the optical flow. It makes for some pretty interesting video shots when you have that lighting up the ground or people underneath it. Now, because you can't remove the lens on this drone, DJI said, hey, why don't we put two sensors and two lenses, different focal lengths on the drone, and people can pick anywhere in between. The problem with that is it's not optical zoom anywhere in between. If you want to look at it that way, it's digital zoom and it's not very good. I know there's a lot of YouTube videos out there of people thinking it's pretty good, but you gotta get the sweet spot for it to look pretty good. So the main camera lens is at 24 millimeter equivalent, and the secondary camera, the tiny one, is at 164 millimeter equivalent. Now having two lenses on a drone would seem like a great idea, right? The only problem is if you switch from one lens to another, you're going into something called explore mode. And as soon as you do that, well, then you're down to like 4K, 30 frames per second max, and you have no more manual mode and your aperture is fixed at F4. So you're gonna have some problems, but DJI is a very smart company. And what they did is they have a pile of software and processor in the drone. And what it does is it takes the sample of both images and it sets the white balance and it sets everything the same. Normally, if you take two cameras in real life and film the subject with two different cameras, you have to do color balance and white balance and all sorts of balancing afterwards to get them to look the same as if it was the same camera. But DJI does that all for you in the drone. That could be a good thing or a really bad thing. For me, it's a good thing when I'm just casually filming. 
it's a very bad thing when I'm trying to do something professional. So for example, let me just show you how bad it is. Here, watch this. Here we have a cell tower and I am manually flying the drone in an orbit fashion around the tower because I'm thinking maybe this Mavic 3 super expensive drone is good for inspections. But no, I just turned my Mavic 3 into a Walmart drone. It looks terrible. But wait, let me zoom in closer. Perhaps that will fix it. Well, kind of, but the image looks soft and I have no manual control to adjust anything. Here's another example. I fly over to a construction site and I'm going to zoom in on the ongoing construction and do some orbiting as I'm doing here. Doesn't it look a little strange? The image does not look like a $5,000 drone, not in the least. Even when I zoom in, as I'm zooming in, it's, it's actually getting worse, not better. It looks pretty darn bad, like there's some pixelation and everything else going on. That's what you get with digital zoom. You just can't fix that. Now in this demonstration, you're going to see that the old adage less is best applies perfectly to the zoom so the less zoom you use the better your image now here i am on the main camera which is the best camera zooming in unfortunately i'm stuck at 4k and i can't control the f-stop i can't control anything but i'm zooming in and you can see with the lesser amount of zoom the image is better but as i start approaching three times zoom it's starting to get pixelated and you're starting to get noise in the blacks it's not looking the greatest and it's gonna get worse it just gets worse from here yeah it doesn't look so great look in the background that does not look right for a five thousand dollar drone that looks terrible now we've moved on to the second camera so here's seven zoom and seven times zoom is okay but look at the colors because it's an f4.4 it can't handle low light and it can't handle a high bit rate in colors so it's messing up the blues and the yellows on my jacket pretty soon everything is just gonna become a mess but uh, sit back and watch this demonstration So I think because of that, professionals may not use the zoom. Now you can use the zoom in photos as well, which is really good. However, as soon as you switch to zoom, you can no longer take a photo in RAW. You can only take it in JPEG. Again, that's because of all that image processing going on inside. You'll never be able to get a RAW image out of that. Now, after using this drone for a month now, I have become used to the zoom. And I can find the sweet spot that I like for the image I'm trying to capture. And with that in mind, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. It's acceptable to me, but I don't think for a professional it would be super acceptable. I could not use it for any professional work, that's for sure. Now the zoom looks pretty good in these examples because I'm using the lowest zoom level on the second camera and I'm filming on days where there's contrast, you know, like dull light. So it seems to work out quite well for what you're trying to film. And always try to get something in the background when you're rotating so that it looks like it's moving. So my young professional friends, I hope I have not scared you away with buying this drone for professional work because it is still good if you use the 5K camera and you record at 5K in ProRes. That's the selling feature on this baby for the camera. Anyways, use the main camera, record in ProRes, 
especially if you record at log profile in ProRes, then everything's really good. But you will need a, a computer, obviously, with large hard drives and a fast processor to manipulate everything in an expedited manner. Speaking of that, the Cine has an SSD on board, so you cannot record ProRes to a micro SD card. Thankfully, you record it internally to the SSD, and all you have to do is then connect it to your computer when you get home and just pull everything off. It transfers very, very fast. The same is true with the RC Pro controller. Say you recorded everything on the screen. Well, then you just plug it into your computer when you get home and you can pull everything off. It's just an Android device, so it operates just like an Android phone. Now for the professionals out there, here's some things I honestly did not know about the drone when I bought it. You know, I found out afterwards when I was reading the DJI specs, but then when I had the drone, it was kind of disappointing as well. But I've become used to it now, so let me tell you about them. The 5K ProRes only works on the main camera when you're recording in non-autonomous mode. So that means if you want the drone to follow you and avoid objects, you can't record in 5K ProRes. It has to jump down to 4K ProRes. If you want to do slow motion, you can't do ProRes. And you obviously can't, and you can't do 5K. If you want to do master shots or quick shots or hyperlapse, you're not going to get the 5K and the ProRes with that. So all of those autonomous type features, yeah, you're not getting. If you want to do zoom, you're not getting ProRes or anything like that. So the 5K ProRes that this is sold, <laughs> the reason it's sold in the Cine version, um, yeah, it's only for the main camera when just flying along, just using the main camera. As soon as you want to use all those other features, it doesn't work. Now, I believe I mentioned this item, but if I didn't mention it clear enough, I'll mention it again here. This camera is unable to do depth of field due to the lens and the f-stop. It's just not going to work uh, for depth of field photos. You can use the zoom control and zoom away in that you would think you would get depth of field, but it's not. If you look behind the subject, me here, that is not depth of field. That bokeh is terrible. It just looks something blurry and double vision going on behind me. So yeah, you can't get anything professional looking with this drone in that respect. Now, one thing I realized I didn't show you is what you get in the box for your $5,000 US. So uh, let me show you what comes in the box really fast, really, really fast. Check this out. Here we have the box. Your Mavic 3 Cine comes in. Inside that box, you will find the shoulder bag, handbag that converts into a backpack. Inside that backpack, shoulder bag, thingy you will find your drone and all the accessories that fits nicely you'll see that your mavic 3 cine is well labeled and full of sensors total takeoff weight of the drone in my test is 909 grams you also receive instruction manual data cable usb cable and so many sets of props that you could keep flying this drone into the next century eight nd filters are provided as well as three batteries a charging hub and the power supply Finally, you also receive the very expensive RC Pro controller. So one item in the box is this beautiful carrying case. It's a carry bag. It's very nice. I think I left a tag on it because I'm not going to use it. I think I'll just put it on a shelf and stare at it. Turns into a backpack. It's very nice. Did DJI need to include something like this to raise the price? Not really, but it is a really nice backpack. I'll never use it because I use this. So I'm, and most professionals, they're not going to use that. So professionals, we all use this a hard case because we throw our camera gear in the back of our vehicles and go from one site to another you need something that's environmental proof outside so i use this case here and everything fits inside i've actually modified the interior a few times i like the ones you can modify yourself one thing a lot of people think is silly is this jock strap this they call it the holder uh, the jock strap that goes on your drone you know what in the winter time when you have gloves on this thing is a godsend i love this this now. If it was summertime, I would probably think it's pretty silly, but in the wintertime, 
one strap to take it off and put it on. It's uh, it's really decent. I like it. Another item you get with this package, they do include the RC Pro controller. It's a 1000 nit 5.5 inch display down here. The joysticks are off the DJI FPV drone. So it's pretty decent that way. These two tiles are awesome because you have one for your camera on this side and the other ones for your zoom control over here. You have buttons on the side that are for Android, just like on an Android phone, you know, go back, forward, see the options open. On the back, you can expand the internal memory with a micro SD card. You have a USB-C charge port and you can also use that USB-C to take the information out into your computer. As well, you have an HDMI at the bottom. You do have two buttons on the bottom that you could configure and you have buttons on the front for your photo and video. Now I do like the controller, but just remember this, just like the other controller, the previous version, when you're out at the field, you're going to have to take your cell phone and turn your cell phone into a Wi-Fi hotspot so that this can get the signal from your cell phone if you want to look at maps. If you don't download your maps ahead of time, that's what you have to do. If you download all your maps ahead of time, then it's fine. You don't have to do that. If you're used to Android phones, it's very simple to operate uh, and it does all the updates for the drone and the controller all via this system here and it does it quite well. It's very smooth. I've had no issues with firmware updates. It's very nice. My only gripe with this is the screen is too small. 5.5 inches is very small and since the display on here can display your image at like when the streaming video image is coming back, it can display it right up to like 1080p, 60 frames per second. It lies to you. Yes, it does. And you see that a lot when you're looking at it and you have your camera set up to take an image of something, video or photo, it looks awesome on here. And then you get home and you look at your image, video image or photo, and it doesn't look the same. It looks worse. So this makes everything look great. Whereas what's coming out of the camera is different. If this was larger in size, like maybe eight inches, then we might be able to see what's not so great. Certainly you can put on the zebras and you can put the histogram to help you out, but it still doesn't work for certain things. My brain after a while gets used to exactly what I see on here compared to what I'm actually getting out of the drone. Now the batteries, uh, one thing I want to mention for the professionals is that if you're out at a shoot, you can charge this out in the field via USB. It does take a while, but if you have the little charging stand and you put these in, you can plug a USB in and it charges fine. I will say when you charge them at home with the included power brick and charger, it's about one hour to charge a fully depleted battery. So if you have three batteries and you want to get out flying, it's going to take three hours. Now my favorite feature of this drone of the Mavic 3, and this is for all the Mavic 3s, it's not just the Cine. I'm pretty much done with all the Cine stuff. My favorite feature is the obstacle of avoidance. It is really, really good. And not only that, the tracking, it's really good. As long as you're moving at walking speed. If you run or you bike, uh, you pick up speed. And I don't think this here sensor system has the ability to miss objects as well at higher speeds than it does at lower speeds, at least not in my trials. One thing I did notice on the drone is the four sensors, one, two, three, four. These sensors here are identical to those sensors on the Skydio. It's the same sort of system they're using here. The Skydio is a better tracking and obstacle avoidance drone. You know, you can't beat that. This is what this drone does, especially for action. If you want to do action stuff like uh, follow cars, mountain bikes, where there's things in the way, you're going up and down hills, avoiding stuff. The Skydio is it. This, this does not come close. This is the best for that. Okay. And if you use the beacon with this, the beacon, uh, then it's, it's, even, it's even much better. So if you're looking for a tracking drone that can track you, at high speeds and avoid objects. Well, this would be the drone you'd want, not not this one. Now I have my cell phone out here because I've been writing down notes as I've been flying this for the last month. And I've been putting down comments on the stuff I like and the stuff uh, I'm a little bit disappointed in for the price. It's all, it's all because of the price and because I bought this to be used as a professional drone. I should mention that as well. I'll stop that for a sec. I should mention that as well. A lot of people probably think this is a professional drone. It's not a professional drone because you can't remove the lens. You can't turn off the GPS. Uh, it has no fly zones. Uh, it's got a pile of other things that make it a non-professional drone for professional purposes. I mean, now if you're in business for yourself and you make money by doing something with a drone like this, you're going to call it a professional drone, right? And I would as well. But if you want to sell something as a professional drone, it has to meet all the criteria. 
So you don't see Hollywood making movies with drones like this. I could honestly see a drone like this being used as a B-roll camera drone in the TV reality show industry. You know, when people are out someplace in the backwoods or whatever, and you're following people around, you need a B-roll camera to set up the shot, you know, shoot from above, do some other stuff. They're not gonna carry a huge drone with them because the camera crew is running around with all the reality stars doing stuff. So they need something small and this would be perfect. So if I confused you with B-roll, let me explain. So this camera that's recording me right now, that's an A-roll camera. I'm the subject, it is the best quality camera. Matter of fact, the lens on this camera probably costs more than this drone. It is the best quality camera for recording your subject. And in TV or the film industry, the camera that's on the main characters would be an A-roll camera. Now, if you want footage of scenes that set up the shot and explain things as the subject is speaking, those would be B-roll and C-roll cameras. So let me show you, that's an A-roll camera there. And then over here, I have a B-roll camera. So if this was over here filming me from the side, that would be the B-roll camera. And for C-roll, you might have something like an action camera, a GoPro or DJI action or anything like that. That would be your C-roll camera. So back to looking at my phone, and I've got it based on a professional point of view. So the positives. So positives, I have that this drone, and this is very true, it's extremely reliable. This drone, I would try with like 99.9% .9 of my shots. You know, whatever I do with this drone, move it one place to another, as long as I don't use a zoom, what I get for a shot, I know it's gonna be good. It's also the only drone that DJI makes that is the most beginner-friendly drone on the market out of all their inventory. What do I mean by that? Say you're a wedding photographer, you know how to use a camera, but you've never flown a drone, you go buy this. This drone will not get you into trouble because as soon as you fly up, the sensors are on, it's not gonna crash into you, it's not gonna crash into anybody else, it's not gonna crash into anything, it's gonna sit still in the air. It's perfectly reliable. Drones that are made by DJI with GPS in them are the simplest drones on the planet to fly and they're known as beginner drones. That's how DJI got their start, making beginner drones and they still do it today. That's why the DJI Fly app that you use to fly this drone looks like it's made for beginners because it's it's all made for beginners. So a photographer, you know, an events planner, they could buy this drone and be up and running in no time because they already know how to use cameras. So they would just go into the camera settings and adjust it the way they wish. I should also mention that this is relatively quiet. Yes, you probably could use it uh, outdoors filming at a wedding because everybody's talking. They probably wouldn't even hear the drone. As I mentioned, the obstacle avoidance at normal walking speeds is outstanding. Flying speeds is good. Obviously, if you put it in sport mode, there's no obstacle avoidance. You're just gonna smash into everything. Flight time is exceptional. 5K camera, I think it's really good. You know, I can complained about the lens being non-removable and everything else, but the picture that comes out of it for a 5K camera with a very average lens is actually very good. And that's also true for photos. So if you take 20 megapixel photos with the main camera, they look really good. The detail is very high. If you take them in RAW, you will find that the exposure is reduced a little bit uh, because the software in here manipulates everything for the JPEG, but the images look, they look fantastic. Oh, there's one other negative here that professionals may not like, and that is the ProRes is only in one format. So a lot of devices that have ProRes on them, they might have three compression formats. So you don't have to have the biggest of compression, the smallest of compression. This here has uh, a format on it that uh, lets compression be very non-compressed. So your files are quite large. And um, yeah, that's what you get. It's great when you put it in your editing software and it's great when you wanna manipulate it. However, it does mean that you're gonna need bigger and bigger hard drives. And the last thing I would say to professionals is it does have something like Master Shots. The Master Shots is really gimmicky and it's sort of made for kids, social media, it's kind of goofy. Uh, so you probably won't use it. However, the video it records while it's taking the Master Shots, you'll probably use that because it's actually pretty decent and it doesn't have to be a person. You can pick something else for it to take a Master Shot of. Same as point of interest, if you need the drone to orbit something at a certain speed uh, and you don't know how to fly a drone, then you would use point of interest. If you know how to fly a drone, you'll never use point of interest because you'll orbit it yourself. Hyperlapse is pretty good and I think pros would use that because it's a filler. When you're going from one scene to another, you put a little hyperlapse shot in there and it can look pretty decent. So I think pros would use that. The quick shots that are coming, they don't exist yet. They'll just be like quick shots in existing DJI drones. And those are just made for people on vacation. 
So uh, yeah, I couldn't see anybody really using those that are a professional. So you see this video is a bit different because since the drone costs $5,000, the people that are probably buying something like this that has ProRes in it, 5K, are going to be professionals. So this was all designed for professionals. If I was making this video here for people who are just amateurs, prosumers, who buy drones just to have fun, go flying and everything else, you guys will be perfectly happy with this drone because it's not going to affect you because you don't make money off it. But as soon as you make money with a product that helps you make money, you have to be aware of the limitations. And there are limitations in this drone that uh, can actually ruin whatever project you're working on until you actually uh, overcome them. Myself, personally, I like this drone. I really do. I have, it's been a month now, so I have become very used to the limitations of the DJI Mavic 3 Cine for professional work. But it is expensive at $5,000, and at $5,000, it opens itself up to people like me saying, what did I get for $5,000? I'm enjoying it for my work. I would not use it for too much professional work, but I'm enjoying it for what I do right now. So yeah, uh, it's definitely a good drone. It's just crazy expensive. So with all that said, I'm going to put links below to the Mavic 3 Cine. Go check out the drone, the price. Uh, if you can't afford the Cine, well, then it's probably because you're not a professional. You do not make money off of drones. So uh, buy the lesser version. The lesser versions are really good. You know, the basic model and the fly more package without the SSD, without the ProRes. They're really good. And the camera, you get the zoom and everything else, the flight time, the range, all the great stuff, the obstacle avoidance. So it's a really good drone to have. And uh, it's a little pricey for those ones as well, but you will get some high quality images off that, even though it doesn't have ProRes or anything like that to expand the, uh, the image quality. But I think you'll be quite happy with it. So uh, links are below. I have to put links below every video. That's just something I do, even if I think things are way overpriced. Links are below to this way overpriced drone, no matter which format you get it in. And uh, go check it out and see if it's the drone for you. You will see more videos of this coming up in the future. Until then, uh, take care, and I'll catch you in a future video. Bye.